Before I dive into this review, I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and anybody who has supported me through affiliate links or donations because with those funds, I was able to purchase the ELAC DB52 or the Bay, the Bay, the Bay, the Bay debut uh, 2.05 inch version to review. A lot of you had asked about this particular speaker. And so I ordered it on Amazon. I think I paid 300 for it for the pair and decided to give them a shot because, you know, my thinking was that they might even be better than the DB62. So the six and a half inch version, the bigger brother of this particular speaker. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, why would you expect it to be better? It's a smaller speaker. Well, that's exactly why. Now, understanding that I'm going to be listening to a smaller speaker, I assume right away, I'm going to use a subwoofer. So I'm not worried about the low frequency response. I mean, I'm probably going to say subwoofer at least at 80 hertz, maybe 100 or 120. What I was hoping that would be better was that there would be more continuity between the handoff of the mid-range to the tweeter. Unfortunately, that doesn't really seem to be the case. With this particular speaker, what we have is about 2 dB or 3 dB or so of a step up in the treble response at around one and a half kilohertz. So the speaker below about one and a half kilohertz is pretty reasonably neutral. And then right at about 1.5K, it just jumps up about two or three dB. And then it's kind of neutral again. I don't understand why that is. And a simple resistor in the tweeter network would really just pad that down a little bit and make it a much more linear speaker. And therefore a speaker that I could easily, easily recommend if that were the case, but that is not the case. Instead, what I wound up hearing and then seeing in the measurements after I did my listening was that the speaker just didn't sound right. Now, every once in a while, I will review a speaker and I'll listen to it. And I'll think, ah, I'm not sure, I can't really put my finger on what it is about this speaker that I don't like. And most of the time, you know, I see the data and it stands out right away. Sometimes I might have to dig a little bit. And I thought, well, maybe this is going to be one of those cases. Maybe there's something in the treble that just wasn't quite right. But what wound up being the case was that the treble was just boosted about 2 or 3 dB. Now, it's not annoying, like, let's say, like a Yamo speaker or maybe even some of the clip speakers where it's boosted and it's just a gradual boost and it just doesn't sound right and it's kind of sharp and edgy. Well, this speaker isn't sharp or edgy. It's just, man, something don't sound right. And that is literally the best way I can describe it. Now, I could just say, yeah, the highs are too high, but it's not bright per se. It's not sharp. It's not grainy. It's not edgy. They're just elevated. Almost like if I took my voice right now, boosted the higher frequency, continue to talk like I'm doing right now, and you'll hear the difference there. Yeah, the higher frequency just stands out more. But now if I drop it back down to neutral, see what I'm saying? It's more neutral. Now it doesn't jump out at you, it doesn't say, hey, I'm right here, but you're thinking, man, something's not right there. That's what was going on with this particular speaker. And that's why this review isn't as successful a review as I had hoped it would be. So let's go ahead and start looking at some of that data. This is the CEA 2034 data. The on axis is the black line and you can see that the on axis, yeah, it's right here. Moving along, moving along and then about 1.5K, boom, there you go. Hey, there's you an extra two or three dB. I don't want that extra two or three dB. What's going on there? Well, like I said, you could throw a series resistor in with the tweeter and I would pad that down or you can use equalization, which I did do in my listening, but I can't remember if I provided the results here or not. We'll see at the end. Using equalization, you can just apply a high shell filter to the tweeter level and just drop that down. And that brings your overall sensitivity to around, I think 83 dB or so. The early reflections directivity index would be fine other than this particular area right here. And I think some of this is also driven by this delta in the tweeter level. Otherwise, you know, the ERDI looks pretty good. So this speaker does take pretty dang well to equalization and it's okay. It's not a powerhouse speaker by any means, but it's a nice linear speaker when you have equalization, such as a mini DSP, or if you have the ability to go into your AVR and set a high shell filter or a low shell filter to make that change. This is the estimated interim response. Now the estimated interim response is a great way to give you an idea of what the tonality of the speaker is gonna sound like before you even put it in your room. This is vetted out through taking multiple measurements of the speaker all the way around. And what you see in this video is just that. I'm using my Klippel near field scanner to measure the speaker 360 degrees 
and it provides you with a sound profile above and below the main axis and to the sides. And off of that, you can take certain measurement points and you can model what the in-room response will be. And in my experience, this prediction is very, very accurate, especially above about five or 600 Hertz, where the room doesn't dominate the sound nearly as much and the speaker is primarily responsible for the sound. What we can see here is if we follow a trend line through here, it's the same story as what we saw earlier. You just got an elevated treble. I don't know why the elevated treble is there. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but in fact, it is there. And to my ears, it was just not pleasing. It wasn't grainy or harsh or anything like that. It just didn't sound right. If we look at the horizontal response as you go from dead on axis and then move around the speaker, you can see that the off axis responses all follow very, very nicely to the on axis response. Again, another indicator that the speaker does take well to equalization. But then if you look at the vertical response, we can see where that kind of breaks down. So if you go above about plus or minus 10 degrees, then the speaker response is quite different. Let's talk about radiation width. The width of the speaker in terms of radiation is around 50 to 60 degrees, depending on what point you're picking. So around here, it's about 60. And then it narrows down through here as the midwoofer starts to beam and loses control directivity and becomes more narrow in pattern. And then when the tweeter comes in at around two kilohertz or so, it gets more omnidirectional again, about 60 to 70 degrees at one point, and then it starts to narrow up again. So the radiation of the speaker horizontally does vary, but I would classify it closer to the uh, maybe not wide, but not narrow. So it kind of sits in that sweet spot of about plus or minus 50 degrees. Personally speaking, it's a little bit too narrow for me. I prefer a speaker that's closer to like plus or minus 60 to plus or minus 70 degrees in radiation width. And now if we look at this vertical response, this is very similar to what we saw earlier. It's just a different way of graphing it. We can see that if you go below negative 10 degrees, then the response starts to change pretty seriously. If you go above about 20 degrees, the response starts to change pretty seriously as well. So stay within about plus or minus 10 degrees of the tweeter line if you plan to buy the speaker. This provides us with an idea about the linearity of the speaker. Now, if it weren't for that shelf at the one and a half kilohertz region, this speaker would be much more linear. But thanks to that, you have a linearity of about, what is that, negative 2.6 to almost plus 4 dB, and that plus 4 dB is right through here. The F3 is at about 60 hertz, and the F10 is about 40 hertz. So in room, if you place it near a wall, you'll get some extra woof out of this thing, but you won't get a lot. It's not gonna get down very low. And as I said earlier, I expect to going into this that you're still gonna need a subwoofer, you do. This is the distortion at 86 dB, one meter, and it's actually pretty good. So you're below about 1% for the most part, you do jump up above that in the mid range area. And then at 96 dB, you are above about 3% THD in that same mid range area. So Overall, the distortion is kind of what I expected it to be. And in some regards, it's actually just a little bit better, especially on the low end area. Now let's talk about compression. This speaker does not handle compression very well. And that's kind of the other problem with this particular speaker. So while the distortion is relatively low-ish, the compression is rather high as you get to high volume. And it's interesting to note, there are some things going on right there here. Now I wonder if that might be crossover components, maybe heating up or some kind of non-linearity in the crossover components. That's kind of interesting. I see this with other speakers, but it stands out to me more here because usually the 86 dB is not an issue. It's not a, normally a problem until you start getting to the 102 dB area. The other thing to note too, is that at the highest output volume, you're losing about one and a half dB in the mid range to about one dB. At the more moderate volumes, it's okay, you're within about half a dB or so. This is the multi-tone distortion. In my experience, as long as you're below about this negative 20 dB line, then most likely you're not gonna hear any significant multi-tone distortion or distortion that comes from playing complex music. But when you start getting above this negative 20 dB, that's when you start getting into issues. So that's captured at about, mm, that's about 96 dB. So I'm going from 70 dB to 96 dB in about eight dB increments. So at the lower volumes, it's okay, but at that 96 dB volume, we can see that you're starting to have some issues right in that mid-range around 600 hertz. And, and in my listening, that kind of jobs with what I heard. When I really push these speakers hard without a crossover, you can start to hear some of that distortion in the mid-range area. But again, I expect that most people using the speaker are gonna be sensible about the output volume and probably also use a subwoofer. Now for fun, what I did was I did apply some post equalization. I took the raw response, and I used a mini DSP and I applied one single band of equalization using a high shelf filter. These are the settings at 1600 Hertz, negative two dB with a Q of about two. So this is the original up here. 
And then if I use those EQ settings, you can see I've made it much more linear just with a single band of EQ. To wrap this review up, overall, I was expecting more out of the speaker. And if that tweeter had been padded a little bit more, I would really have no issue recommending the speaker. Now, if you do have equalization, I don't really have an issue recommending the speaker still, but I think it makes more sense just to go ahead and get the bigger brother, the DB62 or the debate. I did it again, debut 2.0 six inch version. That's what I would just go ahead and recommend you purchase because it does get a little bit lower in response and has the ability to get a little bit louder than this particular speaker. But if you just need something small and with a front port that allows you to put it closer to a wall, then this speaker might work for you. Just keep in mind that you're going to want to drop down that high shelf area. And that's it for this review. If you like and appreciate what you see here, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you leave a like, a thumbs up, all that cool stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I will try to answer them when I can. With all of that said, I appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you appreciate it. And I will talk to you all later. Peace.